Good morning. My name's Carl Horrock. I'm a docent here at the Albuquerque Biopark. We're here today in the farmhouse at the Heritage Farm. That's the northernmost unit of the Botanic Garden, sort of uh, east of the High Desert uh, Rose Garden. Today, I'm going to walk you through a virtual demonstration that's part of our virtual cider fest. What with the pandemic, we're not able to have in-person demonstrations like we'd uh, prefer. So we're uh, giving everyone an opportunity to share some expertise. Uh, myself, along with several of my colleagues, will be presenting various uh, uh, skills and crafts. In my case, I'm going to make a bannock. Uh, we're in a circa 1905 building here. And we're thinking what sort of breads would uh, be appropriate for uh, 1905 Middle Rio Grande Valley. Typically, when you think breadstuffs in New Mexico, it's tortillas and their more modern cousin, the flour tortilla, or sourdough bread, staple of the Old West. But here, we're going to go something a little quicker, easier, and in the middle. Uh, bannock is actually a Scottish term for anything that uh, is a small, round, flat loaf. They can be very elaborate with fruit, nuts, sugars, and sweeteners. We're going to make the simplest bannock there is. We're going to make a skillet bread, the sort of thing you, could, you can cook around a campfire. Very, very straightforward, very quick, something you can do with the kids, too. You can pre-mix the ingredients and take them with you. Uh, so, a very handy uh, sort of thing. All you need is a bowl and something to mix it with. In this case, it's my uh, Danish dough whisk, but a wooden spoon will work fine. Medium-sized bowl, three ingredients on the dry team, a cup of flour, teaspoon of baking powder, a quarter teaspoon of salt. That's it. The wet team, a half a cup of water. We probably won't use it all. And just because I'm, uh, I've got it here, I'll probably add a bit of uh, shortening to the, to the party. So while that heats up, we'll get started over here. One nicely pre-measured cup of flour. One teaspoon of baking powder, not baking soda. They're different critters, trust me on that. Since I've got the shortening, I'm gonna add that. You can add lots of things to this recipe, but uh, uh, shortening will help with the uh, with the shelf life. It'll keep better. If you added a little milk instead of water, it'll be a more tender crust. If you add egg, it'll be a little higher rise. So uh, you know, raisins, currants, things like that could easily be added to this. Right now, I'm just mixing in the uh, the shortening a little bit. And then it's simply a matter of adding the water. You want to do it cautiously because it's easy to get the dough too wet. We want something that's going to be close to a biscuit dough. And in fact, this is going to be very much like a, a biscuit when we're done with it. This strange little Danish dough fork works pretty well. I'm always impressed with how neatly it goes ahead and mixes things. So it's won me over from my days of using a wooden spoon. We've got this nice shaggy mess in here right now. And since I have a little extra flour, 
I'm going to make use of it. That's what we've got, this nice ball of dough that sort of sticks together. You don't really need this in the sense of a classic bread dough. Um, in fact, the more you knead it, the, the quicker it'll uh, lose the energy of the, uh, of the baking powder. Baking powder is a chemical leavening agent, and it starts working the minute we add the water to this thing. So here's our flat dough. It's a maybe seven, eight inches in diameter. I see our pan has gotten to some kind of a temperature. I cook with gas, so I don't know how, how hot that is. One of the things about bannocks, usually they're a solid round, but I find that if you poke a little hole in the middle, you've got a, uh, you've got a uh, good chance of uh, not leaving a, a raw bit in the center. So with that, I'm gonna give it about eight minutes on the first side and take a peek and we'll see how we're doing. Flip it over, give it another eight, 10 minutes, and we should be finishing up maybe in 20 minutes here. For those of you who need a high-tech, definitely non-1905 way to tell whether that's done or not, an instant read thermometer is pretty handy. Um, if you stick that in the bread, and it's 190 to 200 degrees Fahrenheit, you can guarantee that that bread is done. So that's a, a surefire scientific way to uh, uh, test for bread doneness if you don't believe in the uh, tapping until you get a hollow sound sort of thing. So now it's a matter of waiting while our, uh, our bannock sizzles away in the pan. If you were out camping, feel free to prop the skillet in front of a roaring fire or put it on top of some hot coals, but it might take 30 minutes to cook with a lower flame. So here we have the, the simplest, easiest skillet bread I can imagine, and we're making it out of wheat flour, which is interesting because it's not a product that's native to New Mexico. The, the wheat we know that's in that bread probably comes from Kansas, which is the preeminent state for wheat growing, although the Great Plains in general is, is a, the so-called bread basket. Here in New Mexico, Wheat first arrived probably with Oñate's settlers. When they came here around 1600, I imagine they planted wheat their first season. They also brought mission grapes, which are growing right out there outside the, uh, outside the building here. Uh, one of the motivations was the priests that came needed communion wine and communion bread. So they provided uh, needed to provide uh, wheat and grapes for that. And it turns out the grapes do double duty. It turns out the white crystals that form around jellies, around grape juice if you leave it to, uh, around too long, or even in a bottle of wine, the white crystals are cream of tartar. And cream of tartar is one of the ingredients in baking powder. The other one is uh, bicarbonate of soda. One's a base, one's an acid. They get together and make carbon dioxide to puff up this bread. Uh, there's a little cornstarch in there just to make things not clump. Baking powder was invented in 1845, so we're pretty sure that they have it here in New Mexico at the turn of the 19th century. They wouldn't have little packages of, free, of uh, instant yeast 
the yeast they had in those days had to be refrigerated, so I imagine sourdough was the way you would do it in New Mexico when you didn't have much in the way of, uh, of refrigeration. So being curious. I'm pleased to report that the medium setting on this oven, on this stovetop is about medium on my gas range at home. So we're talking about eight, eight minutes on a side and we'll be, uh, we'll be through this. Let's see, we have, uh, uh, normally, I'd be pretending to be the sous chef and cleaning up my mess. I'm going to have a, the uh, finished product look like this. When it's warm, fresh from the pan, slathered with butter and jelly, it's a great thing. If you're out camping, throw it in, a, throw it in your knapsack. Have some cheese and some uh, salami with it when you... Uh, get to lunch. So I think uh, there's the uh, nothing pretty about it, but simple, easy to do, fun for the kids. That's our, our bannock, our skillet bread.